Hey guys, what's going on? My name's Chris, the Big Snowman, and today's video is all about Titanfall. So, what is Titanfall? Uh, well, Titanfall is the first game to come out of Respawn Entertainment, uh, which is basically made up of the guys from Infinity Ward. So, the guys that made the Call of Duty brand what it is today, uh, in my opinion. So in the game, you are a pilot, and you're one of six pilots in the game, versus six other pilots in the game. And the pilots basically can call on these titans, which fall from the sky. <laughs> but there is a delayed sort of timer uh, in between the time where you can actually call on your titan. I think it's about uh, a minute, or two minutes, or something like that, before you can actually do it. Now, if you go on a massive, like a big score streak, uh, right at the beginning of the game, you can actually speed up this, this time process, and it will drop sooner. So, you're going to get a lot of that in the game. The game is also filled up with bots, or AI characters, and it's largely to do with the fact that the guys said that it, they wanted to get rid of this whole sort of like spawn die spawn die mentality which uh, can be really really frustrating in games especially like Call of Duty where you know it's a fast paced game and if you spawn in there's a there's a, there's a good chance that you could get killed especially if someone's spawn trapping you or or something like that so what it does to get rid of that is the AI will basically be capturing flags and stuff like that but they won't be strong enough to really kill you. I mean, I've been in situations in the beta where I've been against like six bots or something like that, and literally they are so easy to destroy, but it does its job, and the job of the bots is to make you feel like a boss. And it does actually make the game feel fun and fresh, which is what you want from a game. You know, you want the game to be fun. You want to enjoy yourself when you're playing it. Too many times these days, players get too mixed up with the whole sort of competitive scene of wanting to do things where it's sort of like, I need to be the best player, and to do this, I need to shit on your team. The trouble with this mentality is if, if you're shitting on someone else's team, you know, that's good, it, but it means that they're having a bad experience, and vice versa. If you're being shat on all fucking day and you just cannot get a good gameplay going, it is so frustrating. So to summarise on that, basically what I'm saying is, it's there to fill in the gaps in the game. You know, to, to try and break it apart and make it more of a smooth uh, and enjoyable experience. Now there are two teams in this game, and one is called the IMC, which is the Interstellar Man Manufacturing Corporation, sorry if I slipped up on that, and the Militia. And the IMC is an aggressive mining and tech company that explores the galaxy looking for planets rich in materials and then moves in to exploit the resources. The Militia is, you know, the yin to its yang. It's sort of made up of the colonists who object to the IMC's invasive and destructive procedures. Um, so it's kind of like um, that film, Total Recall. Now some of you might be shocked to actually find out that this game is multiplayer only. There is no single player campaign in it, and it's for good reason. Basically, a lot of games that are out these days are... Like, in ba like for, to use Battlefield as an example for you guys, um, the single player game is not good at all. And it's time that could have been well spent into putting you know, t more time into the multiplayer experience to make the game a hell of a lot better. And that's basically what these guys did. They said, well, we don't really need a single player uh, campaign because it's just going to sort of hold us back from what we want to deliver to the consumer. And the way of getting around this is they've actually done sort of a, like a, a, a structure around the maps. So there's 15 maps in total. Now, this wasn't out until today, I think. Some guy found out on Reddit, and I will go into that on the map section of this. But each map basically has its own identity and its own feeling and I think also sort of character models. So um, the things that you're doing in the game, whether it be a different kind of game mode, it's supposed to be kind of like a campaign that you're playing. Now, don't think too much into this, guys, because it's not really, you know, the, the thing that makes the game. The core thing about this game is the gameplay, and we'll get onto that in a little bit. One important thing to add onto that, just before I leave this section, is that um, a big chunk of this whole game is to do with the parkour in it, which is sort of like wall running and jumping off walls. And you've got jetpacks, which means that you can uh, you can do double jumps in the game and things like that. And it basically means that you can travel from one point of the map to the next really fast. And trust me when I say this, it feels amazing. When you land the perfect parkour um, sort of run, and then you get onto a building and you take out like three pilots and five grunts or something, it feels amazing.
Okay then guys, so these are the maps and there's a whole bunch of them. There's 15 maps in total. And as you can see, um, they've actually got like labels on these for callouts on the map. So say you're playing with like six, you know, five friends and yourself as a six man team. You've actually got like callouts on these maps, uh, kind of like you do in uh, Counter-Strike where, you know, on the screen in the top right or left hand corner, I don't know where it is. It'll actually tell you whereabouts you are on the map. And this is kind of like the same thing. Now the map choices on this, I mean, as you can see, you're going from green to sort of like a, a warm, dusty place to like more of an industrial place to more of like a beach place. They have clearly tried to do something with this game where it is creating a story and it's going from one drastic to another. And I do actually enjoy that. I mean, this looks like more of an icy map. Uh, more of a cold map and yeah you do get that with other games but as they are trying to implement the whole sort of single player experience into the multiplayer I get what they're trying to do with the maps and they are sort of over you know having like an overly done art style to it which is cool and also all these maps look like they're going to be awesome to actually play because they've got so many like different bits where you can actually sort of wall run uh, like if you're looking at that map now I mean there's factories and as you can see here we've got more sort of bigger pictures of the maps to do with sort of more detailed areas whereas like not not just like a you know an overhead map or anything like that these pictures are more sort of detailed and you can actually see all the routes that you can have and yeah I, I mean these look awesome and also just to dab in a little bit about the game modes the maps seem perfectly balanced for like every kind of type of game mode. I mean, we only played two maps in the beta and they were Angel City and Fracture. And Angel City was actually like my favorite map because it was more of a city map and it was close quarters. And it was a lot more fun than the open space one that was clearly kind of more built for Titans. But in terms of just like sort of domination or I think it was called hard point, which is three flags to cap, that was pretty fun. And in terms of also uh, attrition, which is team deathmatch, I mean, they are just two game modes, but they did seem very balanced in terms of spawns. So that is a really, really good sign to begin with. Now then, Titanfall's single player campaign, or multiplayer campaign is what we should say, uh, reportedly features nine different matches. So five rounds of attrition, which is their version of team deathmatch, and four of hardpoint. And they're playable from both sides, uh, so the IMC corporation people and the militia. Uh, so you could do that like, you know, twice, the whole sort of like campaign sort of thing. Now alongside those two uh, modes, which is Attrition and Hardpoint, uh, you will also have Capture the Flag and Last Titan Standing game types. Now Titanfall will uh, also feature a fifth option called Pilot Hunter, and in that mode one point is awarded for every pilot, uh, so that's like a human player, killed. And also taking down AI opponents provides no points, uh, but lowers the time to earn Titans and regenerate the Titan core abilities. So uh, it's kind of like a, I think, kind of like a mix between Call of Duty Ghosts Cranked mode and also Zombie mode, I'm guessing. It's kind of like that. Now after playing the beta, I definitely did have a lot more fun in Team Deathmatch or Attrition rather than in Hardpoint. And I don't know why. I don't know why I did, but it just seemed like... Uh, a bit more of a skillful thing where it's just concentrating on killing people and because of the fast-paced action of the game and everything to do with sort of like just the, the gameplay mechanics uh, it just felt like that was the kind of game mode that I was going to enjoy more um, now I, I can see myself playing more of the standard game modes when the game actually launches and more of the competitive side of things um, but competitive is the thing that we're going to talk about next Okay then guys, so this is something that a lot of you are going to be interested in is the competitive side of this, especially if you're coming over from Call of Duty or any game that's kind of to do with like an eSport type game and you're thinking about doing Titanfall as a competitive game. I can actually tell you that competitive will be in this game, it just won't be out on release. Now this has come from a spokesperson at Respawn and they said that uh, their focus has been to get a really solid foundation out, so a game that is fun and will attract players and keep them playing for a really long time. So what they're basically saying is that 
they've been hard at work trying to make the game as good as it can be without trying to put on like bells and whistles and things like this and uh, you know you really do need like a spectating mode and things like that for competitive um, otherwise it's not really a pos like, a, like a, a thing that's going to be possible to do for money because you know you need to know that people aren't cheating you need to commentate on it you need people to spectate and it's just something that's like a basic foundation for that game however they have stated that if enough people say that they want a competitive mode out of this game that they will start implementing it into the first um, you know iteration of the game so it will be implemented as like a, some DLC or something like that, and they will eventually build on it. However, they did actually say that um, if you know, if not this game, then probably definitely Titanfall 2 will have competitive support, and will also probably get funding. Being as um, I'm guessing that the guys at EA and Respawn have got some pretty good connections with uh, people to do with sponsorships and money for tournaments. So that is overall a good thing. And just to summarize on that, uh, here's a direct quote from the spokesperson who said, I know we're not going to be shipping with all the features that they're going to be wanting in the game, um, but we're in this for, uh, we're in our first iteration, said Herr P. Sorry if I fucked up the name. Uh, a lot of games that have developed good esports features and a competitive community are the ones that have had multiple iterations to get that done and to build in those things. So basically what they're saying is, you know, what I have just said. You know, they're trying their best to sort of like get the game down to be the best sort of game that they can make. Which, P.S. Little side note on here. I think that Modern Warfare One, and I have always said this on my channel, was the best balanced Call of Duty ever made. And the rest of them are kind of like pants in my opinion. And this is the same thing with this game. You know, this this game is going to be, I imagine, the best version of the game that will be out ever. And when number two comes out they're going to add more things into it which is going to cause more problems and it just seems to be a trend that's been following along with a lot of the games out there these days so I just wanted to add that little side note onto it and I think that about summarizes it for competitive gaming yeah So to summarise on my final opinions and final thoughts on this game, I do actually think this game is going to be really 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 fun. Now I had a lot of fun in the beta and so did a lot of my friends. Um, they all said how you know fluid the game felt, how good the netcode felt and a netcode is a big thing to do with this game. I mean it is built on the Source Engine which um, it doesn't look like it's a Source Engine game and it definitely does not play like a Source Engine game. Now if you're not familiar with Source Engine, Source Engine is basically an engine that runs Half-Life and Portal and all those kinds of games that feel a bit sort of like they've got way too much uh, mouse acceleration in them. Now this game feels like a really, really, really different polished version of, uh, of whatever that game is. Now I can tell you that if people do say that Titanfall plays like uh, Call of Duty, that's a massive accomplishment for these guys because they've built this game on a different engine to the one that was, uh, you know, that Call of Duty was built on. And bear in mind that these guys pretty much did build the Call of Duty engine. I mean, these guys were around from the start of Call of Duty, so they know what they're doing in terms of um, building a game and making it feel solid. Now one other thing that I'd like to address is the fact that there was another screenshot that was found and it's quite an important one because it has something to do with something called um, Generation. Now Generation is their version of uh, prestiging and as you can see from the screenshot on the screen um, it says you know years of battle have taken their toll we can regenerate you at a cost. Your body can be restored but your memory and your experience all will be lost. These will have to, uh, these you will have to earn all, all over again in battle. When you awaken, you will respawn as a second generation pilot. You will be better, sharper, acquiring experience even faster than before. Would you like to go to the next gen? <laughs> and that's from an advocate. Now, I definitely do think that this is some sort of like next generation sort of, you know, gimmicky slogan thing however if you do pay attention to the bottom thing it says warning you will lose all that you have unlocked and will be reset to level one all challenges will be reset however you will earn xp at an accelerated rate of 110 percent as a second gen pilot and you will retain your burn card collection you will get a unique chip indicating to others your your you know your gen status now i think this is an amazing feature especially for a game that i think is going to do pretty well on the pc for once i mean 
a lot of the Call of Duty games, they're quite popular on the PC, but the, the, the company kind of, I mean, EA, sorry, not EA, Activision, gave up uh, on the Call of Duty franchise in PC very early on. I mean, as soon as the game comes out, there's pretty much hacks for it, and they just don't do anything for you know, to maintain the servers on PC. This game, I think, is going to have a lot of attention on the PC, and I think it's a very, very good thing that we're going to have for sort of like a prestige thing going on in the game because, I mean, in Battlefield, it took way, like, it took not enough time, not anywhere near enough time to rank up to the uh, the highest level. I mean, it, it should have been triple the amount of time to get to the highest level in Battlefield, whereas in this game, I think it's going to be a good thing that it's going to take you not so long to get to the highest level. However, it will give you a bit more extra game time out of it, a bit more play out of it by resetting your level and going for it again. Um, so those are my final thoughts and, you know, my general ideas about how better how the game is going to play out now i hope you guys did enjoy this video and if you did stick with me till the end which i know this is a very long video and i did want it to be sort of you know not as jargony but have a lot of detail in the video about what you guys you know need to know about this game and the main sort of points i wanted to get across so please let me know what you think about this game uh, i will definitely be uploading more gameplay of the game when uh, the game drops <laughs> when the game drops and I think that would be the 11th of March for um, USA and for Europe the 14th so definitely expect more from this game on my channel however don't please don't think that it's going to be you know taken over the channel because it will not be um, but I will be doing sort of like a, a mini series of this game and maybe doing some live comms and things like that so thanks a lot for watching guys I've been Chris the Big Snowman thanks peace